Hey, good morning, Pete, North Las Vegas. I want to start this video out by giving uh, Burst Angel 211 a shout out. Uh, he shared some information in the comments that's uh, turned out to be pretty helpful on these old uh, Colt uh, large pin sear block rifles. Um, I happen to own two of them. And this one here, the sear block is, is still installed. There's a blind pin on this side. There's a blind pin on the other side. And that hole there, there's a roll pin that comes out of the, uh, the receiver floor and uh, locks the bottom of the sear, sear block in. Um, I've done some videos in the past, so some of this information is going to be repeat information, but uh, I do have some new stuff to share. And uh, like I was saying, this will probably be the last uh, video I do on my old uh, sear block lowers. Okay, so if you have one of these older uh, sear block Colts, um, that means you also have the large trigger pins. Uh, mil spec uh, trigger pin holes are around 0.155, and they use mil spec 0.154 pins. On the large, these are generally around 0.169 and the pin holes are 0 0.170. Okay, so if you have an older sear block lower Colt, large pin, you also have a proprietary trigger. Now this is the Colt trigger that goes with the sear block, and this is your standard mil spec dimension. You can see on the sear block trigger they have removed this section here for your selector or safety bar, tang, protrusion, nubbin, whatever you want to call that thing. And uh, so that, that's been removed and then we'll get into why they did that. And you can see that if you have a sear block lower, well, that's the only trigger that's gonna work with a sear block. Okay, so this was the old sear block that used to be installed in this rifle. And I, I pulled this out so that I could replace it with a drop-in uh, modular or cassette type trigger. And this happens to be a, a velocity trigger. And it's a large pin velocity, but this will not fit into the rifle, even though it was designed for large pins, unless that sear block was removed. And here a little bit later in the video, I'll get into why I removed the sear block and why I ended up installing the large pin velocity trigger in here with what I thought at the time. Okay, so here's a look at the uh, sear block again. And this hole on the side, whoops, let me get my pointer. This hole on the side here is where your uh, your selector switch slides in. And there's a look at the what the rivets or blind pins look like that um, hold it in on the sides. So anyway, we're gonna take a closer look at this sear block and then we'll take another look at the trigger and see why they designed them the way they did, I'm not sure seems to me there could have been so many different ways to do this but anyway we'll get into how colt did it okay so on the sear block this entire length here would be sitting um, flush up against the side of the receiver so that would be this side of the sear block um, fits flush all the way down and uh, you'll notice that on the other side that the only part that's going to sit against the receiver is uh, this upper one-third or close to half. So only that would be touching the receiver, which leaves an opening or a slot on this side uh, where your selector comes in right here. Now, I'll put the trigger and this together and you'll get a better idea of, of what we're talking about here. Okay, so early in the video, we talked about this proprietary trigger that's used with the sear block, how it's missing at least half of its uh, trigger bar. And that fits in to the side like this. 
Sorry about the camera work. I'm trying to do all this one-handed. And you can see when your selector comes in, you still have part of the trigger that can be actuated in safe or fire mode. And uh, like I was saying, why Colt decided to design it this way, I don't know. It's, <laughs> it seems like there could have been so many other ways to accomplish slowing somebody down or preventing them from putting a drop in a sear or a full auto trigger group than doing it this way. But this is, this is how they did it. Okay, so now we're going to kind of get into why I pulled the sear block out of the other rifle. Okay, so I don't know why, but this trigger started going bad. And hopefully I'm, I'm getting this at the right angle. You can see where the front portion of this trigger is, it's got an indent. And this is after I stoned it, after I sanded it, and after I polished it. It was deep enough to where I, I couldn't get it all out. And um, it also started showing some wear signs right where it meets the sear. And I put the trigger back in the rifle and it smoothed it out quite a bit, but it was still, you could still feel it, it wasn't right. And it got to a point where I just, I wasn't even sure the trigger was safe anymore, the way it was engaging and the way it was pulling through during firing. So the trigger had to be replaced. Now we'll get into the rest of the story. Okay, so I guess starting a year and a half, maybe two years ago is when I started getting serious about this and wanting to replace the trigger. And so I went online, I went everywhere I could think of, trying to find a large pin uh, trigger manufacturer to where I could replace the trigger without having to remove the, the sear block. And I didn't have any luck. Uh, I found a lot of one piece uh, modulars that made the large pins, but they all set up front that cannot be installed with the sear block. Sear block has to be removed. So then I ran across uh, Geisley and I clicked on it and I thought, well, it says large pin, so maybe this will work with, with the sear block. And when I clicked on the, uh, the large pin trigger section, uh, nowhere up front did it say uh, the sear block had to be removed or that the trigger could be used with a sear block. So I called Geisley and I said, hey, I'm looking at your large pin triggers. I have an older Colt with the sear block. Do I have to remove the sear block to install your trigger? And the representative I talked to uh, probably a year and a half ago, maybe longer, said, yes, the sear block has to come out. Our large pin trigger groups cannot be installed with the sear block. So I said, okay, so that is why I pulled the sear block out of this, which allowed me to install whatever kind of trigger I wanted. And there is an upside to removing the sear block, and that's that you get to run a full auto M16 style bolt carrier. Whereas if you still have the sear block installed, you're going to have to run this abomination here where they basically cut half of the uh, the bolt carrier group off to get clearance around your sear block. Okay, so back to Geisley. Uh, I made a video about this showcasing removing the sear block and getting the trigger I wanted in there. And uh, this is where Burst Angel came in. And he says, hey, I just ordered a Geisley and it, it looks to me like it, it might work with the sear block installed. So I said, really? I said, well... I called once and they said no. And after his comment, I called again more recently, like when he first left the comment, which was probably a few months ago, I called Geisley again and I said, hey, uh, uh, there's a guy saying that uh, the, your triggers might work with the sear block installed and uh, do I have to take it out or not? And uh, once again, I got a different representative and he told me the same thing. You know, the, the sear block has to come out. So I commented back to uh, Burst Angel and I said, hey, uh, it sounds like you got one of these on order. And he said, yeah. And I said, hey, can you get back to me and just let me know if you have to take your sear block out? And he says, yeah. So a few weeks later, he commented back and he says, hey, guess what? It works with the sear block installed. It went right in. So I'm going to pull the trigger out of this bag and we'll show you that I don't even need to install this. 
and I can just look at it and I already know that it's gonna work. Okay, so here's the Geisley. And you can see that half the uh, safety selector bar is missing. So this will, without me even having to install it, slide in with this sear block. So once again, Burst Angel 211, thank you for the information and thank you for getting back to me to let me know that this will in fact work. Okay, so this part of the video, we're gonna show uh, Geisley's online website and how nowhere up front, when you select this large pin trigger, does it tell you whether this works with or without the sear block removed. You can read their description. Nowhere in there will it tell you. Um, you can get down in here into their specifications. So they have a couple of links here about springs and replacement trigger pins. If I click on that, that's all you get. Still no mention of uh, sear block. Okay, so nowhere on their uh, actual trigger part of the uh, site does it say anything about sear blocks. So let's go in and see maybe guys in technical support. And no, I don't see anything there. So it doesn't look like anything's there. Okay, well, let's try installation guides. And uh, I went through all this, looked at it, clicked on my trigger, and there was nothing in there about uh, sear block. Well, let's try product questions. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, look at that. Colt rifle user's guide. We're getting close. Still not there yet. Got to click on something else. Uh, finally, we're there. That one looks familiar, doesn't it? Okay, so if you read the text, it's a little bit conflicting for me anyway. Uh, but the chart is pretty straightforward. It'll tell you what trigger works with what type of, uh, whether you don't have a sear block, whether you have a pin like I have on both of my rifles, or if you have the integral block type, where later on Colt got rid of this and they just didn't fully machine the receiver itself. And that was called the uh, integral block type. So this thing is buried like five or six click in and I can get to it pretty quick now because I know where to go and where to find it. But like I said, when I was first researching their uh, their large pin trigger, um, I, I never found this information. Um, I just didn't make it that far. So uh, I ended up relying on what two separate phone calls and two representatives told me as far as having to remove this sear block to get their large pin trigger in which was bad information. Anyway, guys, Lee, just a, a site improvement tip. Take this information and put a link right there with the trigger that takes you straight to this information about sear blocks. All right, Pete North Las Vegas, over and out.